Welcome everybody to the Regenerators Unite event. My name is Natalie Venus. I'm one of the seven or eight co-founders of Regeneration Mauritius and that current, currently form the core team and that is working very hard and actively on setting up Regeneration Mauritius. We are still at the, quite at the beginning of our journey. We've had so far three physical events here in Mauritius, obviously. And today is the fourth event, uh, but the first one that is online, uh, as we wanted to connect Mauritius to, um, to the world. And um, while looking at the chat, I think we succeeded quite nicely. I've seen many, many different countries uh, coming by. We have an interesting program today, as you can see on your screen, uh, with two special uh, guests. Uh, Professor da Danje Jury, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mauritius. We have John Kirkert, I hope I pronounced that correctly. He's an impact entrepreneur in regenerative agriculture. And then we will have um, Thomas, Thomas Berman of Regeneration Mauritius. And then we will finish with a Q&A uh, at the very end. Let me introduce today's first speaker, uh, Professor Janje Jury. Uh, he is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mauritius. Um, I think everyone who is from Mauritius uh, will know him. He's uh, quite famous. Uh, but uh, originally, I believe he's a polymer chemist. Uh, he has in-depth knowledge of science and technology and innovation. And he's joining us today to tell us uh, a bit more about why he's interested in Regeneration Mauritius and where he sees uh, where our two organizations can work together. So Professor, I give the word to you. To all the participants, very good afternoon, wherever you come from. For some, it's the morning. And uh, thank you again for uh, inviting me to this Regenerators Unite meeting. In fact, last week, uh, we had planned uh, Regenerators Unite events on the university premises. Uh, we kind of regret we couldn't do so in the present circumstances. You know, for some of you who are not uh, in Mauritius, we are in confinement since the 10th of March and confinement has not been lifted yet. So we cannot have uh, meetings uh, uh, with people physically present, uh, but we do hope we can host uh, a meeting at the university uh, uh, soon. So let me first of all congratulate Thomas Berman and his team at Regeneration Mauritius for this remarkable initiative and the huge work, I must say, uh, that they, has already been accomplished in such short lapse of time. Uh, I still recall the meeting we had before the confinement, before lockdown. Uh, we had a meeting in February and uh, I could really gauge, I mean, all the accomplishments of you and your team, Thomas. Uh, in my short speech, I will respond to three questions that have been put to me uh, to kind of give you a better idea of what brings us at the University of Mauritius closer to Regeneration Unite and how together with you, we can make a greater impact on transforming agriculture and ensuring sustainable food systems. So the first question, let me go through it. In fact, it is about why is the University of Mauritius interested in being a partner in Regeneration Mauritius? Well, let me, start, let me start by saying, to me, it looks like a natural partnership. Let me explain what I mean by a natural partnership. Regeneration Mauritius' vision is to drive innovation and development of sustainable food systems by connecting talent technology and capital. The University of Mauritius vision is to drive innovation through research and entrepreneurial activities in close partnership with the public and private sectors and the community. Not very different, is it? So we share the same uh, vision, I would say, reaching out to people, reaching, uh, partnering with people and the key word in both our vision is about innovation. Second, both Regeneration Mauritius and the University of Mauritius put a major focus on the UN Agenda 2030 and the SDGs. 
of course, for regeneration measures, SDG2, and hunger, achieve food security, and improved nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. But all the other SDGs linked directly to SDG2, a profound change of the global food and agriculture system is needed if we are to nourish today's 815 million hungry and the additional 2 billion people expected by 2050. It's not me who is saying that, it's the UN. So we need to work hard for that. The second question put to me is, how can the university mobilize global knowledge and expertise on food systems? Well, to answer that, I will say that the Faculty of Agriculture at the University of Mauritius, which is one of the oldest faculties, has built considerable expertise over decades now. Through the Agritech Park that we're championing at the university, we, our major focus is on smart agriculture and digital agriculture. We focus also on food security. And thirdly, we have put up an agri-processing incubator at the Agritech Park. The, the, the importance of that agri-processing incubator is precisely to groom and support entrepreneurs with novel ideas. This is included uh, in the mission of Regeneration Mauritius as well. So we work closely with local companies and at the local level, I must say that recently we have taken that initiative of putting up a cluster, a, what we call a university industry cluster in agriculture and food systems. Uh, so we've got people from uh, the industry sector working closely with the university to define a kind of a roadmap to, uh, you know, for the cluster to be, where the cluster could be very active. A third question is what kind of international collaboration on food systems would the university welcome? Well, uh, we have two important ongoing EU funded projects to the tune of 12 million rupees and 20 million rupees. Uh, one is to train farmers in smart agriculture techniques and sustainable food production, which is SDG target 2.4 in the Eastern part of the islands called Belmar. The second one is the development of smart innovation through research in agriculture, which you probably know as the ZERA initiative to foster a strong climate relevant, productive and sustainable transformation of agriculture and food systems research for development. So these are two projects where our, uh, our researchers, our academic staff are working very uh, uh, closely. And uh, um, uh, these are kind of projects that uh, uh, we, we would like uh, to have or partnerships that we'd like to develop. We're also part of a very good, very good network at a regional level. Uh, we're part of RUFORUM, whose mission is to strengthen the capacities of universities to foster innovations responsive to the, de to the demands of smallholder farmers. So we are uh, a member of, of RUFORUM. Uh, on my side, I would also advocate for a closer partnership with the uh, FAO, as it works to make private sector investments compliant with the SDGs across the agricultural value chain through various initiatives. I don't have time to go through all of them, but I'm sure you people have a um, uh, better knowledge of how we can partner, how we can build closer relationship with the FAO. We're also very actively involved with the Association of Commonwealth Universities and the Association of uh, Francophone Universities French-speaking universities, I should say, uh, both doing a lot to promote the SDGs. Uh, I personally chair the ACU SDG network, uh, which looks at teaching, research, partnerships, stewardship, all those key areas uh, linked to the SDGs. Of course, we look forward to growing our partnership with Regeneration Mauritius and extend our full support at the University of Mauritius to the Regeneration Mauritius team. So I wish all participants to have an opening, uh, eye opening meeting. And uh, uh, thank again, Thomas and Natalie for inviting me uh, to be, to participate in, in today's meeting. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Professor, and thank you for your encouraging words. Although while listening to you, I realized that uh, you yourself and the university are, are already uh, doing a lot as well and working on the very same goals as we are. So that was very good to hear. Um, let me move on to the second speaker, uh, John Kirkert, uh, who is joining us from uh, Germany, a lot colder than uh, here in Mauritius. He is an impact entrepreneur uh, with a passion for regenerative and climate smart agriculture. And he's here to share today with us the story of his company, Tari, an agroforestry business in Nigeria. John, over to you. Thank you very much, Natalie. And thank you for inviting me and giving me the honor to present our company here from um, Regeneration Mauritius. Thank you very much. Special thanks to Thomas. Um, yeah, let me share the screen with you and thank you for the kind introduction um, to give you a short overview about what we are doing in Nigeria about agroforestry. This is the company called Tari. We are in Nigeria about uh, agroforestry and I will give you a short introduction about what we are doing. Let me see. All right. Um, a bit about my personal background. Um, a few years ago, um, I was actually in the construction industry um, to taking off soil. I was working for a big uh, corporate and we were digitization, the construction uh, industry. And the journey from taking off the soil to actually regenerate the soil and build up soil. Um, this here is actually a farm in Brazil <clears throat> about agroforestry. And um, a few years ago, I went to Guatemala and I met this beautiful former investment banker, the guy with the uh, straw hat called Lorenzo. And he had a cacao farm, an agroforestry cacao farm. And for the first time when I entered this beautiful farm, uh, it really resonated with me. And um, yeah, I decided uh, to quit my job and to use my entrepreneurial skills um, to foster agroforestry um, from my side. And what agroforestry actually is, um, it's the combination of agriculture and forestry. So you put on arable land uh, where you have normal crops, you put lines of, of trees in between and you use, use the natural succession of nature. So actually when you have grassland, you do nothing, a primary forest will, will come up and you just use it with, um, human skills and human intelligence to create uh, productive food systems. So what are the benefits of agroforestry? So first uh, you can produce up to seven different layers so that you can produce more on the same space, uh, which means um, more food production. And one of the SDGs zero hunger is fulfilled by that. And the other one is by producing more, you're also making more revenue, more income, which means um, it's also helping to diversify uh, and increase the income of the farmers. And the other one is beside those economical um, terms, it's about healthy soil. You really build up with regenerative agriculture and especially in agroforestry, you produce a lot of biomass and then you build up healthy soil, which stores more CO2 in the soil, which also stores more water and uh, it's more drought and also flood resistant, which fights uh, climate change. This is how an established system looks like. On the left side, you can see one of our partners in uh, Ivory Coast who have like 60 hectares of agroforestry, quite astonishing. And on the right side, you can see those tree lines and in between there can be produced uh, grass for cows or rice or vegetables, lots of different things. So this was really much in line with my kind of own passion um, because um, I'm coming from the countryside in Germany. Um, I was gardening with my granny. I love to go hike and be out in the nature. I'm a hunter myself and I love to uh, cook healthy and organic food. So um, yeah, I decided to, uh, to support agroforestry and I went on a journey um, for over one year and I traveled to um, all the agroforestry events all over the world. And uh, it was a long journey of serendipity. Um, and I ended up in Nigeria, uh, and this year is the highest holiday for the Muslims up north, where I was riding with 2,000 other people. And on the upper right corner, you can see my co-founder, Nasi, who invited me. I met him at the um, agriculture conference in Germany, and he's kind of Mr. Agritech. So uh, when I told him about my idea about uh, supporting agroforestry, he said, come to Nigeria and we can collaborate together. He's in Agritech. And yeah, this is how... 
I ended up in Nigeria last year. I spent the entire year there. And these are my two co-founders, uh, Nasser, I already told you about, and the other one is Lucky. He's also joining us today. He's uh, on our farm in Nigeria. And I hope if the network is stable, if you have any technical uh, agriculture uh, questions, uh, please uh, ask Lucky. He's the expert in our team. And he's from Uganda. I did another project in Uganda before, and he was trained in Israel. And he joined us in, in, in Nigeria. So what we, we aim for it in, in Nigeria is uh, to prove commercial viability on agroforestry in Nigeria, to be one of the key drivers uh, to the regenerative transformation, not only in Nigeria, but entire Africa to inspire and lead by example, and also to share our knowledge, help other people to get market access and find their own viable business models. We position ourselves between food production, rural development and uh, regenerative um, mind shift or approach. And our goals are increase food production, uh, increase job creation and income diversification, and also build resilient and sustainable systems which are backed by the SDGs. So our business model is uh, to create in a regenerative way, um, high quality food and uh, organic certified. Then also we want to venture into food processing where the actual value is created. Then we are aiming to get direct contacts to our customers to, to cut off the middleman. And we also produce food for Nigeria for the local market, but also for the international export market. And uh, last year we did uh, two pilots, uh, two demonstration farms. This is one of our farms, uh, two hectares, where we have planted over 50 plus variety to test out which uh, plants and which varieties are thriving and which have good synergies. And we planted on those two hectares more than 6,000 tree seedlings. And in between we planted rice, maize, um, ginger, and uh, lots of different vegetables. So our goal is uh, starting in Nigeria and uh, to work with nature to create abundance, um, but also going all over Africa to inspire others to share our knowledge. And um, through that, I'm coming to Regeneration Mauritius because I've attended one of their uh, events recently. And I came in contact with uh, Thomas and through Generation uh, Mauritius, I got contact to ALU, which is for me a, a really inspiring and progressive university. I'm also lecturing at different universities in Africa and Europe, impact entrepreneurship. And um, the other thing is through one of the events from Regeneration Mauritius, uh, somebody from Rogers from Mauritius came to me and said, it's really inspiring what you're doing. Maybe we can collaborate on, on some things. And then with one on the uh, meetings with uh, Thomas, he told me about uh, the sugarcane industry is collapsing in Mauritius because of lifting subsidies from Europe. And that was actually where it came in my mind. Um, we have one of our customers who's looking for dried fruits and nuts. And also I'm importing with a, a business partner, uh, Cacao from Guatemala. So we already have market in Europe. Why not setting up uh, an agroforestry farm in Mauritius as well uh, to help the collapsing sugarcane industry uh, to give them or lead by example that they can also use agroforestry. Um, and to set up a training center, maybe also a small eco resort because Mauritius is very famous for tourism. So, um, we from Tari, we are looking forward uh, for collaboration from people from Mauritius for either setting up uh, a pilot or sharing the knowledge uh, to team up to also bring agroforestry to Mauritius. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward uh, to stay in contact with you. Thank you very much, uh, John. That was really interesting. And um, I think agroforestry is one of these uh, concepts that are you hear more and more about. Uh, it's, a, I think, an interesting concept for, for farmers um, as it usually gives you different, several uh, income streams at the same time in, instead of, for example, what we've seen a long time in, in Mauritius, the monoculture and only having one uh, revenue source. Uh, and, and I also love that idea of uh, not just being in Nigeria, but also exporting outwards and, uh, and sharing the, the knowledge and, uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll see you in, indeed here in Mauritius. That would be, that would be really great. Uh, let's move on first to um, last but not least, Thomas Berman of Regeneration Mauritius, uh, who will present to you, um, well, Regeneration Mauritius and what it is all about. Thomas, over to you. Thank you so much, Natalie. Uh, and uh, 
I'll just start briefly with a short introduction to myself. Uh, I'm, um, I'm a husband, a dad, two children, uh, 46 years old, uh, born in Singapore, raised in Norway, lived in Norway all my life, and uh, just recently relocated to Mauritius. And the reason for that was is solely to be part of this. I, I strongly believe that small countries like Norway and Mauritius and others have an outsized role to play in the world at the moment. We need to change how we uh, organize ourselves, how, how we uh, run our societies. And to do that, I think we need some examples of how that change is actually possible. So um, through the last 18 months, I've been fortunate enough to be in Mauritius a couple of times. I met a lot of great people and felt that uh, there was some energy and a possibility in Mauritius that I really wanted to be part of. So at the moment, uh, I've had uh, two great months out of uh, COVID and now uh, luckily we're back in, uh, in confinement, but uh, still we're definitely moving along. Uh, I'll just share uh, a few slides. Um, and um, this is uh, Fernie. Uh, so I know, I know Jean Marc is here. We, we visited Fernie AgriHub uh, a few weeks back. And it's just an example, and the same at the university. You know, there's a lot of things happening in Mauritius already. So many initiatives, uh, both on small scale and larger scale, that's already happening in, in the food system. Um, and we think regeneration, which is really is a, is a way of bringing these initiatives together, but also including new initiatives like uh, the one you presented, John, and, and others that we know could be uh, viable in Mauritius uh, moving forward. So there's just a few people of, of, uh, of the core, of the people that's part of the core working group. Uh, in addition to this, there's also, a, there's also an advisory group and now also a volunteer group. Um, so there's a lot of people already involved. And what we're trying to do is, is really to address the need to change our food systems. This is nothing new. You know, it's been discussed for many years. Uh, a lot of people have been working on it for many years. So it's nothing, you know, it's nothing that we've come up with. But we think that um, uh, the COVID crisis has really pushed us to the forefront. So now there's a lot of people who is finally getting attention uh, that the work they have been working, doing for so long that it's, uh, it, it, it demands more focus. And we also want to see this uh, possibility for change as an opportunity. We think there's a lot of opportunities to create a better society uh, if we manage to, to, to change uh, the food systems. And as, as uh, was mentioned earlier, food system really encompasses all the sustainability goals. So by working on this one very big problem, uh, we could also solve some of the other challenges. So this is, is the focus of regeneration missions. We want to see how we could, together can work in a different way to at least be part of changing the food system. And to do that, we, we strongly believe we need a system approach. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think there's a slightly too large emphasis on single solutions in our society at the moment. Everyone is sort of seeking a single solution to a very difficult challenge. What we need to do is, is look at it more as a system because it is a system. The food system, you know, it's not only about production on land and production in the ocean, it's also about how the processing side, the distribution, uh, the consumption, circular economy and that. So it's, it's a huge uh, challenge that we have to, to address. And then we also need to approach it in, in, in that way. So the core thing of regeneration missions is always to see if we can work to find uh, small solutions and large solutions that both are good for people, planet and profit. Our vision is uh, not to only make Mauritius a good place to be and, and uh, Mauritius to have a good food, food system, but more than how can, how can Mauritius become uh, a laboratory or a platform for innovation, for change, for discussion, for moving things along. And uh, I'll get back to that a, bit, a little bit later. I think uh, Mauritius is uniquely placed in the region to have such a role. But first, we have to acknowledge that 
our society today is, is very much focused on this or the structure of society has been uh, has been done based on the industries you're in this the sector you're in so it's very much a silo organized society and silos are great for increasing efficiency so you, if you know what you're going to do and you want to do it better it's really good to have the same kind of skills in the same company or in the same entity but if, if you need system innovation it's really bad and this is what we're struggling with in the world at the moment that we have a silo society and we need to fix systems and this is why I myself and, and quite a few others are on the call today started on a journey five years ago to create an, a substitute or not no, no not, not, not a substitute uh, but a supplement uh, a way of organizing ourselves ourselves in society in a way to address the system so this model is called Podriv. it was uh, developed through a research project it has been now running in Norway for five years uh, three years a pilot and then as a research project and now also uh, been scaled to, to different areas of in Norway. So this is the model that we're actually bringing to Mauritius. So it's not something we've come up to with here and now, it's actually a framework that we'll be using uh, as a platform of this initiative. And the core part of this framework is you and me. So it's only possible to change systems if people change the system and that means that it's actually up to us yes we have some good structures which is called organizations and government and ngos and universities that can help us but nothing will happen unless we do something and that is why the core value and focus of regeneration missions will be individuals it's us the people who need to do something we need to connect in new ways we need to share we need to drive change but it's really difficult to do that alone. So that is why we need to come together. And that's why we hope uh, that you will unite. The second part of the framework is to separate it from a movement of people wanting to do something. So we are not, we are not here to fight the existing system. We are not here to be an alternative to, to what is happening. Regeneration Missions is a platform where all the organizations who want to move in this direction can come together as equal partners. So actually, if the university wants to be a partner, they will co-own this initiative. It's not something you will co collaborate with. It's actually a platform you can work on together with other people and organizations. What is unique about it is that every organization and all kinds of people are invited to join. So this is not only for the big corporates. It's not only for people working on agri. It's not only pe for people who, ha who have influence. It's for everyone. And it will only be successful if we manage to have a wide variety of organizations and people involved. So Regeneration Mauritius will have this, hopefully, this kind of organizational model. It will be anti-silo, totally transparent, and have a heavy emphasis on action. So the organizations, they will then be the partners and co-own this open platform, sorry, they will then select a, a board who will, and, the, and there will be a few people who will be employed as a network leadership. Then every individual wants to join as a regenerator will be the brain of this movement and this change. So this is people who want to contribute with you know, one hour a week or uh, 50 hours a year, whatever. Uh, uh, well, that's actually the same. <laughs> or, you know, it, it, people who, who want to, to use their skills, their resources to, to be part of this. Then there will be projects coming from outside, like we heard today, or there might be a project that is developed in, in collaboration. And then we'll try to build this in region in Mauritius as an example, and then scale it and scale the ideas from there. So if we manage to build this, we think regeneration Mauritius will do basically three things. One, it will be a platform for ideas to become action. We heard of an idea today of how can we bring agroforestry to Mauritius. 
just by this event today, I know there's people listening in today to John who said, oh, this is interesting. Let's, you know, we should probably look at that closer. And if that happens, this platform has already done something. So what we want to do is make it extremely easy for people to come in with these ideas and then help them connect with other people who might be interested in doing something, but always push, pushing for action. The second part the platform can be used for, and we hope it will be used for, is to bring people together who have been discussing difficult issues for a long time without making progress. So for instance, I won't say that the, the, the sugar cane industry is in a collapse, as, uh, as John's mentioned, uh, but it's definitely an area where there needs to be some change. And there's done, been done a lot of work in this field for a long time. What this platform can do is bring the same people together, but also include others who normally might not be part of the conversation and see what are the pilot projects? What can we do? What can we, how can we understand this together in a new way? and then develop solution from there. The last part, which I think regener uh, regeneration mission will be very useful for, is to bring different disciplines together. And this is for me, who has no, no background in the food system. Uh, I'm in economics, uh, uh, I've been working on innovation and system change and social entrepreneurship. Uh, um, but I've seen that my skill is actually useful also in this context. And the same is for people who have an you know, IT background or an accountant background, or they work uh, as a health worker or an educator, because we need all the different skill sets to really find the solutions that can create this change. So regeneration measures will not be a place for the people who's usually worked in food. It will be for them and all others in society who want to be part of this change. We really want to focus on experiments to see what happens if we bring these skill sets together in new ways and what can we then achieve and what can we show as a actionable projects and initiatives. This is our roadmap at the moment. Um, so we're um, in March. We had a few open events. We'll have a few more. Uh, hopefully also physically. Uh, we have got a lot of feedback so far and we hope there will be even more feedback today. Then we'll start regeneration missions before summer, uh, invite people, organizations to join. And summer, I mean summer from my own country, Norway, uh, I guess it's with winter in Mauritius. Uh, and then we'll gradually build this initiative. It's, it will take years to really have effect because this is not that is something that is solved overnight. If it had been, it wouldn't have a problem. So we will keep inviting people in, grow this movement, grow the platform. We will do it, we will try to do it through quick wins, showing action on the ground and being very concrete. So this has been our milestone so far. And up until the event in, at the University of Missions, we were actually on, on time on everything. Um, but we said that we still are committed to this plan. So hopefully there will be an official launch uh, of Regeneration Missions where we actually have the platform, uh, which will be both a digital platform and a physical platform of people uh, where you can come together, where we also can start projects, we can seek funding together and we can get things moving. So that is our target for now. There's many ways you can get involved. Obviously, you know, we, we really need needs everyone to, to include people uh, who is not here today. And this is, I think, one of the most difficult parts of, of building regeneration missions is include the people who are not normally part of this conversation. So we need your help to reach out to those who should be part of this, but might not have the same network or the access or the interest in this sort of very sort of overall theme, but they might have a role to play. Then we love it, love to you for you to go into our websites, sign the manifesto if you want, sign up for the newsletters so you know what's happening. And you can also apply to be part of the volunteer group. Uh, and the volunteer group is really the people who's moving this forward. Then we would like to have your ideas. We'll hopefully get some through the discussion today. 
And also, you know, if, if you want to be uh, one of the organizations who's part of this as, as we start, obviously contact us and we'll make sure to, to start a di dialogue. So with that, uh, I'll, I'll, yes, I'll open the floor for questions and comments. First question is a question from Sandrine. Uh, she's asking, what about organic production for Mauritius? Phasing to recover from pesticide source to more organic plantations in the future? And what about partnership with the tourism value chain and using local food production to promote better the destination? Um, who would like to answer that question? Uh, Thomas, you want to give a go at it or shall we? Yeah, I, can, I, 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 I won't have an answer to it, but, but I think this is the kind of uh, question that I think is, is very interesting uh, to discuss in regeneration wishes. And I know there's, there is um, uh, at least, uh, I, I think there is people here today who's in uh, the hotel industry uh, and who has joined because there are a lot of, of resorts and hotels in wishes that are very conscious of, of the food uh, they provide. Uh, so I think this could be a very interesting way, and I know there's already been a lot of work on this, but how can that be uh, developed further? How can it be scaled? Uh, and I think that bringing those people together who's already been working on it with people who have new ideas is one thing that we should definitely try to do within regeneration wishes. Yeah, this is indeed a discussion that we could have, and this is why this is a good example to show that um, because when we talk about food security, people automatically think about food production, uh, but there is so much more behind it and uh, uh, different industries will, uh, will uh, be able to play a role, including tourism and, and hotels. Um, so yes. Um, the following question is from Isaac, and I think that is probably destined for John, his question is, is there a premium price for organically grown foods in Nigeria? <clears throat> um, in the big supermarkets, um, you can you can definitely find some organic products already, um, but it's still a very small niche. Uh, but there are more and more kind of farmers market for experts, expats, for example, where they can pay a, a premium price for organic. But most of the organic products grown in Nigeria are exported, actually. Following question is from Victoria. Are the projects that Regeneration Mauritius partner with about sustainable and regenerative agriculture or really pushing for this regenerative side? I can, I can um, if I can comment on that. I think that we are, we all agree that uh, the time to only speak of sustainability is, is kind of behind us and we really need to think about um, uh, regeneration. Uh, rebuild our ecosystems. Um, so I, for one, um, I think we are uh, open to, uh, to definitely push the regenerative side of, uh, of things. Can, can I just add something to that thing? Yes, of course, Thomas, go ahead. I think it's a, and this is something that we've been still discussing is you know, do we, do we aim for an ideal society or do we focus on change and getting, you know, change as much as we can as, as quick as we can? And I think uh, the core working group at least is agreeing on, you know, we want to have change. So we, we, we don't re want regeneration to be this very sort of utopian uh, trying to create the, the ideal society because I, I don't think it's, you know, any of us really knows how to do that. So, so it's, I think it's just as valuable to change someone who's not even part of the system or think they're part to sort of shift them two centimeters. Uh, that is to sort of really have this pilot project that, is, um, that really gets global attention. I think we want to do both, but always focus on action um, and really sort of trying to show that we need to work on the ground to make things happen. So it's not, there's so many, much work doing on strategy and plans, what we should do. Uh, but I think we need to, if we need to, if we are to collaborate and get that moving, I think we need to do something together. So I think that hopefully that will be the focus. Next question from Nivershi um, at Medin. 
at here in Mauritius. We are interested in integrating the principles of agroecology and agroforestry in our mechanized food production systems, but we often face a lack of practical knowledge to get that in place. Any recommendation or advice you can offer? I am guessing that the question is addressed to John. First, there's an invitation to reach out to us so we can share uh, our knowledge, but there is an international network uh, about agroforestry, uh, different ones, but there's the World Agroforestry Congress where I've met different experts all over the world. So I can just connect her directly to them who are having consultancies um, and they're also active in, um, in Africa, for example, Ecotop from Bolivia, which I can highly recommend. So there are already experts who are doing those kind of consultancy things and we can just uh, chat up directly and I can help her with some experts. Jacqueline Sanjay is with us from the Chamber of Agriculture. Uh, she wants to quickly say something. Go ahead, Jacqueline. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, John, for and uh, Prof. Dan Chajari for the interesting presentations in the beginning. Just to add on to what everything has been said uh, with all the Q&A going on, I'd just like to point out a few things. Um, there is already an FAO project on agroforestry that has been put forward, uh, presented to the Mauritian community, but it hasn't picked up at this stage, unfortunately. And I guess that John, with your type of presentation, which is more on hands, hands on on what we can do, would be very much more interesting for the agronomists that have uh, been shown the previous presentations and that's why it hasn't picked up, unfortunately. As regards to, to organic production, there is a small group of organic producers in Mauritius. Um, and indeed, they are the drivers of, what, of the change that needs to be made in, uh, in Mauritius. But we must not forget that there are 7,000 growers in Mauritius, 7,000 of vegetable growers in Mauritius, and they need the change. They need to be accompanied. And I completely agree with Thomas that we cannot have a very utopic um, uh, vision at this stage, but we need to accompany those ones so that they can have the necessary knowledge. Never, she said, direct, said very clearly that the change must be with knowledge, and that is something that needs to be bring and bring brought to us here. And I think with this platform, it will be it is the exact solution that we need to bring the change to what we we want to put forward for our sustainable and regenerative Mauritius. I've spoken to a lot of uh, people who uh, contacted me from different countries, uh, so uh, from diaspora, but also people who have been you know, engaged in Mauritius in different ways. And I think uh, the value that um, you can bring to regeneration Mauritius is immense. So people from outside of Mauritius who have a connection to Mauritius, uh, I think, you know, if we can really use the network that Mauritius has globally, I think this is this can be a sort of a key element in regeneration, which is of really speeding up the knowledge sharing and also the idea sharing between what is happening in different countries. Because I think it's there's the real value is, is if you manage not to create the solutions again, but you know, use what is there and then combine them anyways. So I really hope that we can get the diaspora and, and the other um, stakeholders in nationally who is part of this you know, working on the challenge to see how can wishes be useful for them. So that's something I'm, I'm really keen on also getting feedback on because I know there's uh, people from the universities in Norway, uh, from Ireland, um, from Pakistan here. And I, I think that would be really, really useful to see how can, you know, in what context could a country like Mauritius be interesting? Uh, so that's something we would love to have feedback on. Uh, another question from, uh, I think we can do another two questions and then we also have uh, um, Piero from the um, European uh, Commission, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who also wants to quickly uh, have the floor. Um, but first, as I said, another two questions um, from Christian. In the context of launching this initiative, how do you see the role of the educational policy institutions 
in pushing ahead? Do you see a need for a system within a system? Uh, for example, given a macro system to be better organized to enhance the effectiveness of a subsystem? So I think it's uh, a education of obviously is important in, in many ways. So, so for one, it's, it's all the existing knowledge we have already. How can that be used in more and more efficiently? Uh, but it's obviously also going to be new knowledge that has to be created to change the system. So that's, that's two parts. And also really keen on how do we involve students both for them to learn how to work in this kind of innovative processes, but also as a resource and as a, you know they have a mindset going into this that I think we need uh, to change the system. So I would sort of love to see students being even more engaged in, in the real life projects, getting them closer to what is happening. Uh, and we in Regeneration Missions could be a hub for, for connecting students to, to these projects. When it comes to sort of the policy side, I think uh, you know there's, there's more and more countries now that are that are leaning towards experimentation. So, for instance, Finland has done this on the governmental level. So they they've seen we need to experiment more to to create the policies we need because it's really difficult to know what is going to work and not. So I think uh, regeneration missions also could be a, a platform for experimentation. And then you can say, you know, we now are experimenting, so we are, we are not taking too much political risk, uh, but still creating a lot of knowledge that then can lead to better policies. So I'm hoping that that uh, that the policy uh, uh, that was just my wife uh, that the, that the policy and the government is is uh, going to be very much engaged in this. You know, regeneration missions hasn't been established yet, so we're still trying to figure how it's done. And, and, and what the key components in this is, is not really how to do it, because we have a model that we're actually going to use. But we need to have enough organizations who's part of it so that we, we think it's possible. And it's also that we need to find funding uh, that there's a lot, some people who actually can be that, um, you know, you, that you have someone to contact. Because this this can't be run on, on pro bono as we're doing now, for you know for for ten years. Um, so, I mean, but given that we have a setup, that we have uh, the infrastructure there, I I think it would be a, you know you can definitely contact regeneration. We should say we are we have this company, we have this solution, we are looking for these kind of opportunities, and then the network leadership would look at the other partners, now other people in the network, and connect to. You with people that might fit that uh, and will not make sure it's happening, it's up to you. So you still have full ownership and you don't give away your ideas. It's still sort of very much your initiative, uh, but we can help you in, in sort of doing that connection. And I think that's really useful both when it comes to people from different countries, but also for people who don't have the network. Because that's from my personal experience, I've been lucky to have a lot of network, um, and then you can. It's easy to get in contact with people, but if you don't have a network and you have a great idea, it's really difficult. And this is also why we see regeneration missions as also the democracy project. How do you leverage this, and how do you get more people access? You know, if if they have the resources and the willingness to do something, then they should be allowed to do it. I would want to give the floor to Piero Venturi from the European Commission and wants to share um, some funding opportunities. Thanks a lot. Sorry for this inconvenient, uh, but uh, here uh, sometimes uh, informatic tools are uh, quite problematic. Well, uh, I'm Piero Venturi, as you mentioned, and uh, I'm working for the European Union here in Addis Abeba. We are in close contact with uh, the African Union Commission. And uh, well, thanks, uh, first of all, for the, this interesting uh, uh, hour, I learn a lot of things, and I see we have many common words uh, when we talk about uh, food security, we talk about innovation, uh, we talk about agroecology, agroforestry, and on this purpose I would really like to mention that um, we have a, a new program that is going to start April-May, that is called uh, 
Horizon Europe. This is a very a huge uh, program on research and innovation that uh, is uh, open uh, to the world. And specifically in uh, uh, our first uh, calls, there will be what is called the Transversal Africa Initiative. That is a, a big initiative that uh, will include uh, 30 topics with uh, a relevant part of them on uh, agriculture and food with a strong focus on Africa. So this means that we expect a strong participation on, uh, from uh, African partners. And uh, well, another key word that is essential in our work is uh, entrepreneurship. So we are really interested to have SMEs participation, to have networks as uh, the one that you are setting up, be involved in our program. So, well, unfortunately now we are going to, pro to publish it April, May, so I don't have uh, uh, I don't have uh, really uh, material, but uh, well, please uh, keep um, keep uh, follow follow the the communication tools uh, because there will be this uh, for sure options for you to participate. And uh, when one uh, one uh, information mainly for Thomas, but for everyone, also Norway is associated to the program. So I, I see you are we are in touch with uh, the National Research Council of Norway. So. Please get in touch, get in touch with them. And uh, for sure, they are always very active in, in, in our program. So, but this is an information for Mauritius, but also for all the African, the African participants. Um, just to mention also what, uh, that in Mauritius, there is my colleague, Janine, Janine Young, that is working in our delegation that is very active. She's also attending uh, this, uh, this webinar. So don't hesitate to contact her for, uh, for any information any need. It's over from my side. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you very much, Piero, for, for this information. That is really interesting. I'm sure a lot of people in this room are, are happy to hear that. And we will get the, uh, the exact website or platforms where we can go to learn more and share that with everyone. Um, guys, it's already past 3 o'clock. <laughs> it went by so quickly. Um, Thank you all very much for your participation. Um, all the questions that we did not manage to answer, uh, we will get back to you uh, afterwards. And um, uh, thank you again and stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>